Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Classics PowerCon 2017 exclusive Stratos, Trapjaw, and Prince Adam Mini Comics 3 pack. That's right, my friends, exclusive to PowerCon this past year, we got this awesome new three pack giving us some of the main characters as seen in their alternate looks from the original mini comics. These have actually been long requested variations of these main characters, so finally getting them is pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this exclusive three pack. As you can see, the figures come in that same style window box we've seen for lots of other multi-packs from the Masters of the Universe Classics line. Fully showcasing Stratos, the heroic leader of the bird people, Trapjaw, the evil cyborg criminal with an iron jaw, and Prince Adam, the heroic secret identity of He-Man. On the side of the package, we've got the PowerCon exclusive logo as well as the Super 7 logo, who is producing these figures now. And then when we flip it around to the backside, we get my absolute favorite part. Down on the bottom, we've got the scroll that's got some new bios for the three characters, which is pretty cool. But even better than that is this absolutely gorgeous artwork at the top portion of the card back, featuring mini comics versions of Trapjaw, Prince Adam, Stratos, and hey, look in the background, you can even see a pretty sweet Triclops back there. But the artwork is bright and vibrant, very colorful, and something that I really love seeing on some of the packages we've gotten from Super 7 so far. I hope this is a trend that continues because in my opinion, this right here breathes some real life into what I otherwise consider a pretty boring packaging design with the green gray skull bricks. I don't know guys, it's been like a decade and we've seen the same package packaging here, so trust me when I say I really appreciate getting some new touches like this artwork. So the box is cool, very nice looking package, but let's go ahead and get this opened up and take a look at the three figures within. Alright, so we've got our new figures outside of that box. We're now going to take a closer look at them. If you were not familiar with why these three characters look the way they do, these appearances are actually based on early comic book appearances where they did appear like this at least one time. Stratos has kind of got like the weird flesh tone fur or feathers going on. Prince Adam looks a lot more like He-Man just wearing a blue vest. And Trapjaw is much different with this kind of greenish yellowy skin tone. It's a really cool set of repaints that harkens back to early appearances. And like I said already, these are variants that folks have actually wanted to see for a long time. So they definitely make for perfect convention exclusives. So we're going to go and look at these guys one by one. I want to start off by taking a look at Stratos. So these are pretty cool because there's some new stuff going on here, but there's also a lot of reused parts, which is to be expected since they're basically just kind of new paint variations for the most part of pre-existing characters. So you'll notice that we got a lot of the same sculpt going on with Stratos here. He still uses that same kind of beast man body, which is exactly what Stratos used before. But there are some key differences here. First of all, he's got this new little feather thing around his neck, which is very cool. Nice red feathers there. There. They just uh, sit over the neck. They're made of a nice soft pliable plastic. Just kind of sit over the collar there, but I really like that. Some other little changes that are new on this version of Stratos that we never saw before. His left hand actually has a closed fist. Now that you just use that beast man fist or like a gripping hand because it's got the same little claws on there like beast man. But this is nice because the other versions of Stratos we had always had open hands. This is going to be good for gripping onto his accessory that I'll show you in just a bit. In addition to that, instead of having the weird rounded kind of socked feet thing going on, he's actually got the Beastman feet as well, so he's got toes and clawed feet. A really nice little touch and upgrade, something that we've never really seen before with the Stratos figure. He's also got this new little piece going around his belt there. Again, it's made of soft, pliable plastic. It is attached to the figure, not really meant to come off, but it just kind of sits over the pre-existing belt there. So before I go any further, uh, this is where I'm going to mention that all of these figures do have a little bit of strangeness going on with the plastics. Uh, so I do want to throw out there that Super 7 has already acknowledged that there's something a little off with the plastics in these. This is the first set of figures that they produced from their new factory, and I think they also kind of pushed them out a little quickly for to get them in time for PowerCon. So the plastic definitely turned out a little bit odd in this, and this is what I'm going to show you all the weirdness going on. Stratos seems to have it the most. First of all, 
the little wings that are around his wrists, we've seen those in the past. They are made of a much, much flimsier plastic than we've ever seen them before. You can see they're very gummy, very pliable. These were always a much harder rigid plastic on the past versions. You can spin them around the wrist, which is nice, so that way you can position them the right way, but because they're so gummy, they're definitely gonna come out of that box a little warped and they kind of like almost flap around a little too much. I'd wish they were a little bit more rigid so they sat on the arms the way they're supposed to, but yeah, these are really, really soft. Also, one of the things I've noticed with all of them, I don't know if it's like thigh positioning or what's going on, but the legs seem positioned a little weird, and it almost makes their furry loincloth pieces look a little too short, like too much of the leg is exposed or something on there. And let's go ahead and talk about articulation. We're going to go and run that down here with Stratos. Uh, so the articulation is exactly the same as what you'd expect. However, I will note that the head is super tight on this guy. In fact, you're going to see that across the board. And the plastic is made almost a little too hard. And as a result, the heads are not really removable on these guys. I mean, look at this. I cannot pull this head off. Um, in the past, we've always been able to easily pop the heads off of Masters of the Universe Classics figures because they're just on a ball joint. These are not coming off. Now, if you want to still try to remove the heads, I would recommend using the hair dryer trick. If you've never done that before, if you get a hair dryer, put it on like a medium or low setting and just kind of warm up the plastic a little bit so it starts getting a little soft, you should be able to pop that out of the socket. So you could try that if you want to, but otherwise I would not try to force this. The heads are definitely stuck on these figures. So in addition to that, the shoulders are very tight. They're almost like these really, really tight ratchet joints, but the biceps are a lot looser. You can see they kind of swivel real easy. Elbows are pretty loose. The wrists are loose. The torso is actually almost too loose. You got to swivel at the waist. The thighs are pretty loose on this guy. So swivels there and uh, you can also move them forwards and backwards. Nice ball joints, but they're actually really, really loose on this guy. But then the knees, just like the shoulders are like extra tight. They got these crazy ratchets going on there. And I like that. I appreciate that. But when you've got the tight knees in combination with the really loose thighs, it actually makes posing his legs a little weird and awkward sometimes. So just something that I would really kind of be wary of with these figures. And I'll show you the same thing with Adam and Trapjaw because they've got a little bit of it going on there too. Um, so the good news is that the Horsemen and Super 7 have already identified this problem and they're already doing their best to correct that with all of their future releases. So hopefully this will not be a problem going forward, but unfortunately that is something that is present on these PowerCon exclusives. So Stratos does come with one accessory, which is the Staff of Avion. We've had this in the past, but this is a repainted version, so it's a little bit of a different color. Uh, it's almost got like this kind of gold color green uh, with a nice kind of metallic green at the top. It still has the little handle on there that was meant for his open hand, but like I mentioned, since he has an actual gripping hand now, you can actually put the staff in his hand, and that actually works out much nicer. It's way better for getting him to hold on to it. Okay, so that's going to bring us to this version of Prince Adam. So basically what we've got going on here is your standard He-Man body. He is wearing the same Prince Adam vest. However, this time it's done in this blue and gold and black color scheme, which actually looks really cool. And one of the things that I love about this is they fixed it. They included the little sheath for a sword. You might or may not know that this was supposed to be included on the other Prince Adam figure we got, but it wasn't on the final figure. So I was really happy to see they included this on here. He does come with a version of the power sword and you can see it fits in there very nicely. Otherwise, the head sculpt that they opted to go with is that mini comics or Ular head sculpt, which is really nice. He's got a little bit of a different paint deco. The hair actually looks a lot more blonde on this version than the Ultimates He-Man, but it works out really well and definitely gives him that mini comic feel. So the overall articulation is pretty much the same as what we saw with Stratos. Again, the head is not coming off this guy. It's really, really on there unless you want to try the heating trick. Uh, he's got the same really tight shoulders. Uh, biceps aren't too bad. Joint at the elbow, swivel at the wrist. He's got the ab crunch, the waist swivel. His thighs are also pretty loose. He's got those really, really tight knees. Uh, swivels at the boot cut. And then he's got the nice ankle articulation with no pin showing there. So the articulation is pretty good on there. It's ultra tight at the shoulders and and the knees, and of course, non-removable head. So I mentioned that power sword that he does come with. It's the same power sword as before, but it's got a very cool looking new color to it. It's almost got this real nice kind of semi-metallic uh, gunmetal look to it, which is very cool. Now here's another deal. Uh, with the hard plastic, specifically how we couldn't remove the heads, the hands are made of that same plastic that is way too hard, which means that the fingers don't flex like hardly at all. 
His left hand is a little bit more open and it's easier to get the power sword into, but you can see that it takes a lot of work to get him to hold on to the sword. So again, that heating trick would work good there. You can kind of loosen up a little bit if you want to. Otherwise, uh, just be a little bit careful getting the sword positioned in his hand. And finally, that's gonna bring us to Trapjaw. Now he is the most different looking, I feel like, than all the rest. One of the things that's really cool about this guy, that's a new head sculpt. Yeah, that is a brand new head sculpt. You can see it's shaped a little bit different uh, on the helmet there. The jaw also not articulated. It is just locked in place. It doesn't move. So that's the first trap jaw figure in this line that doesn't have an articulated jaw, but it's still a really nice head. And I'm glad that we got something a little new there to fit in with the mini comic look. Also, he does have this new little loincloth piece, which is really, really nice there. Otherwise, he's just got this really bright green, almost yellowish skin. There's some really nice shading in there that I like quite a bit that brings out the muscle de uh, definition and everything and then you can see that his arm is done in kind of like this flat silver color uh, one spot on here I noticed there is some paint scraping underneath uh, so that's a little bit of a bummer because uh, it looks like it's just painted on the joint there and it scraped off the first time I articulated his arm. Uh, but that's the only real complaint that I've got going on there. Otherwise, I really like the look of this guy. Now, the articulation, it's the same on this guy's as the others. You're not going to be able to get that head off. The shoulders seem to be a little tight and the knees are very, very tight as well. Uh, in fact, the head's almost got a little bit of a bobble going on here, which is always a bummer. I'm always a, a bit sad to see that. Uh, but otherwise, he'll, he's still going to stand there fine and he functions pretty good now he comes with the same attachments that we've seen before so you'll notice I've got him with the gun attachment right now if you want to swap that out you can easily just pop that out of the peg there and in its place we can pop on the little claw which does articulate it's the same claws before or we can put on the hook now something I want to show you guys with the hook that I noticed while I was messing with it it looks cool it fits on there good this might just be something with mine uh, the peg is totally not glued onto the hook at all. Like when I push it on there, the peg stays in there and then I kind of have to like pry the peg out. Now that's something I could probably just fix. I'll just glue uh, this little peg piece into the hook. Um, so I don't know if that's something that just slipped through on mine, but that might be something that you guys want to watch out with as well. All right, guys, it's comparison time. Just for fun, let's go ahead and stand these new versions alongside some of the past versions of the characters. Here is the new comic version of Prince Adam standing alongside the more filmation style Prince Adam or original action figure Prince Adam. Uh, so it's the purples and pinks versus the new blues. Uh, it's pretty cool to see these two standing side by side. They're very different looking, actually. Uh, one of them is much happier and smiley. This one looks a little bit more angry. I don't know, has a bit more of that barbarian vibe, I guess, if that's the style you prefer. And how about Stratos? Let's go ahead and stay in Stratos alongside both the other versions we got in the Classics line. The one with the red and the one with the blue feathers. And I also got the other Staff of Avion in there so you can see the difference between those as well. And lastly, how about Trap Jaw? We've got three very different versions of Trap Jaw, which I like. We got the toy style, we got the filmation style, and now we've got the mini comic style. And all three of them are very cool looking. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the brand new PowerCon exclusive comic book three pack featuring Prince Adam, Trapjaw, and Stratos. Okay, the sculpts are great. The designs are awesome. I really am happy that we have these variants of the characters, especially that trap jaw. I've always wanted that specific trap jaw. I think they look very cool, and I like the new touches that they did, especially with some of the new pieces that they added to these figures to make them look more like those versions from the comics. However, Elephant in the room, I talked about it through the whole video, there's some definite issues going on with the plastic here. Now like I said, the Horsemen and Super 7 are actively working to correct this going forward, so hopefully they'll be on top of it and we won't see this problem again. I definitely think they're doing a good job of trying to get this line uh, going on their own and continuing it, um, but yeah, these uh, definitely are a little bit subpar compared to the quality we've seen on past versions, just because of the way the plastic is made on these guys. If you're gonna pick up these sets, it's just something you guys will want to be careful of. It's totally not a deal breaker unless you're somebody that really wants to switch those heads around. I think that's the one thing that's really going to get in the way of some folks. So these were exclusive to PowerCon, but the good news is, is that they are available still right now on BigBadToyStore.com. They're a bit on the pricey side, but if you want to pick them up and add them to your collection, they're available for you there. So happy hunting, my friends.
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of these guys. And don't forget to subscribe for more reviews just like this one. Until next time, my friends.